Hello everyone. Based off the title of this video, you all know this is not a, a happy video. This is, um, it's, it's, this is gonna be very hard for me to do, but I feel it is necessary in order to provide clarity, not only for myself, but also to affected parties. Um, by the end of this video, you will find my final review of Stetson University, and I hope you can bear with me as I navigate explaining issues uh, pertaining to sexual harassment, uh, uh, including discrimination, being unjustly fired, and... Uh, now being placed on disciplinary suspension so any viewers who do not find themselves comfortable speaking about this uh, i ask that you close your browser now as i will be going over uh, a document that contains all correspondences from the university and uh, all relevant email interactions um, today. Uh, okay, so I am going to open my screen so I, you guys can see the document now. I will also read it in case uh, some of you, um, in case the, the webcam isn't viewing the, the thing, but um, here it goes. This is when it all started in the spring of my first semester, of my second semester at Stetson University. So, I filed the grievance against Ronald Hall, and this is what I said. A couple of months ago, I was introduced to two classes I'm taking with him, Intro to Philosophy and Intro to Philosophy of Religion. I was enamored by his teaching style that invoked discussion-based learning into the classroom until, well, he asked me to quote exactly what he said. Do you want to be in bed with me? I had a face of disgust and tried concealing it with laughter in an attempt to shrug off what was being asked of me, while simultaneously continuing to make my point on a question whether we think believing in God is properly basic belief, he posed to the class. Another claim besides verbal inappropriate talk with the student is an unfair grade on an assignment he gave me. The prompt asked, do you think there's anything certain related to religious belief? He gave me a 50% on this assignment and only made one comment, that it was completely inadequate, and that I did not address the prompt, which I believe I did. At the time, however, I did not confront him about it because it was easier to apologize for my negligence, and that... I would just try harder on the next paper than to fight him on a prompt that was, first of all, completely subjective, and he didn't even give me su any suggestions to improve. Joshua Rust. Ah, uh, Dr. Rust. I am taking a research philosophy class that is supposed to help prepare me for my senior project, though I am a freshman. I feel this would be an excellent class to get into the thick of it. Little did I know I would receive an unfair grade. The assignment asked us to pick a topic and critique an article of our choosing and present it to the class. 
Today, I had prepared a presentation that spoke on an article written by Sigmund Freud on the sexual theories of children while laying the voice foundation. I was expecting a near-perfect score, if not 100%, being that I dare to be significant by coupling analysis with that of my own voice from which I thought was being asked for me, of me to critique. Instead, I got a notification saying he gave me a 2.7 out of 4 and suggested I be more systematic. By now, I am walking out of my 2.30 class downstairs to speak about this and inform him abruptly I'm thinking of dropping my philosophy major, that I feel completely inadequate. He didn't try to tell me otherwise. My eyes began to swell with tears, but I did not break eye contact. I told him that he is a teacher and walked back to my 230 class thinking why some teachers don't have a caregiving component. Now, there are two stark uh, changes of mode of responding I see between the two professors. I, instead of doing more work, I guess, and fighting for a grade, I simply apologized for my negligence and that I would try harder on a next paper for the person who sexually harassed me because I knew he was not worth the effort. Now, the second professor is a professor I valued and I, um, I wanted uh, support and therefore I did try to communicate what um, was going or what was happening emotionally as I did try my best and did not receive the grade I wanted. And as we continue, there are the email receipts where I filed it to Dean Elizabeth Scomp at the time. And here's what I said. Good evening, Dean Elizabeth Scomp. Your assistants referred me to speak with the Associate Dean of the Arts and Sciences today. He was very blunt in the sense that not only did he state that he was unwilling to help me with this situation, sexual assault, but also unwilling to do his job and verify the inadequacy of instruction, bias, and discrimination found in a classroom. Please do let me know a time if and when you are willing to sit down with me and have a discussion about the grievance I filed. Thank you, your dearest Artemis, they slash them. Now, I do notice the word, I, uh, I put in parentheses sexual assault. Um, I know uh, verbal, being sexually harassed verbally would be qualify under sexual harassment, but I did feel affected and my feelings uh, were hurt. I, I felt invalid, so I, I took it as an attack, as, as a sexual assault. And this is what she responded. Dear Artemis, I am in the receipt of your message and would like to take this opportunity to respond in writing. My charge as Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences includes care and concern for the students, faculty, and staff within our Stetson's academic community, as well as the fair, consistent, and ethical observation, observance of... Oh, there's a... When I screenshot this, that copied that out. Uh, and procedures. It is also my responsibility to connect members of our community with appropriate resources. Let me address the matters you mention one by one. First, I, and indeed the entire university, take allegations of sexual assault very seriously. I see that you have copied the Title IX Office, Lyda Kaiser, Executive Director, and Title IX 
coordinator will address the matter as required through the appropriate channels. The academic matters you mentioned would fall under our grade grievance process. As Associate Dean Glander explained to you yesterday, the process may be initiated at the end of the semester after the official grade is filed for a course. The steps involve requesting an explanation from the faculty member and then turning to the department chair if the matter is not settled. The written policy explains the subsequent steps in the process as well. Whenever possible, we should seek to resolve concerns and grievances informally before resorting to formal channels. It is not clear from your message whether you have spoken with Dr. Melinda Hall, chair of the philosophy department. In the interest of seeking understanding and resolution, I encourage you to raise concerns directly with Dr. Melinda Hall as soon as possible. I kind of personally took this as like a slap in the face, um, simply because she kind of sort of adverted me and did not make me voice my concerns directly to her. And, um, yeah, she made, she, she, I just felt like she slapped me in the face, um, and told me to go to someone else, someone under her, uh, which she obviously has power to do something because she's the de the academic dean. She oversees the faculty in my mind. So that was my headspace. And here is an official correspondence from Stetson University uh, when Lida reached out to me. Dear Artemis, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Lida Costell Kaiser, and I am the Title IX coordinator here at Stetson University. Part of my job is to follow up on reports of behavior that fall within our gender-based misconduct, sexual assault, and interpersonal violence policy. I wanted to follow up with you on a recent report we received. First and foremost, I want to check in and see how you are doing. Additionally, I want to share that Stetson takes these reports extremely seriously, and I would like to follow up on any policy violations. It is also important that you are aware of your rights and opportunities for support and assistance. Here is a link our page with resources, which has a number of resources you are welcome and always encouraged to use. This is our general Title IX website. It provides information on definitions our policy and procedures. I hope you are doing well and I would like to meet with you to discuss the information in person if you are interested. Please let me know when it is a good time to meet. I look forward to hearing back from you. And then Dr. Rust uh, gives me an apology. Artemis, Thanks for talking with the chair about your concerns about my teaching. I just got off the phone with her and I think I have a better sense of why our hallway conversation was so upsetting to you. It was, I think, a conversation that neither of us anticipated having at that moment. And I felt distracted because I was running a bit late for my epistemology class. As you know, I have to get to my classrooms a few minutes early to set up Zoom, PowerPoint, attendance, etc. When you had told me that you were going to drop the major, while you said those words, I interpreted to mean that you were dropping my class, which A, I found upsetting because I think you have made real progress in your philosophical development. And B is why I followed up with you about the class instead of focusing on your broader point about the major. 
Frankly, I walked away relieved that you were still planning on finishing Philosophy 399, and following that, I was thinking about how I might convince you to keep the major once you pass the course. In any case, I now more clearly see that I should have been more directly addressed to your concerns about the major, rather than address the anxieties about whether or not you would stay in the class. Um, I, I need to pause. Um, okay, I'm back. I um, am just feeling a bit exhausted. Um, And I apologize for that. I've enjoyed having you in my in this class. I enjoy your contributions to student discussion, and I think your project is an interesting one. As you know, the learning curve has been steep because it is an upper division course, but I think you have a, you have become a better philosopher. So far as the great as the last grade is concerned. You know, I don't mechanically assign the final grade based on individual scores and weights. Of course, we can talk about the that grade, but let's also talk about what you might do in future assignments if there is an additional clarification or support needed. I'm ready to provide it. Let's talk about these issues in person. I can meet tomorrow, Thursday from 9 to 10 or 2.30 to 4.30, Dr. Rust. And then I responded in a separate email string uh, to another grade that I did not like. Um, and the subject title was Good Evening. Good Evening. Dr. Rust, you gave me a three point five out of four. You mentioned that I shouldn't have used personal experience, even though I incorporated external sources to reinforce my thesis. I utilize my personal experience because my project is centered on my voice, and that's beside the point, because not only should one sound credible ethos but also emotive pathos while having a heavy dose of common sense. Logos, what is, you introduce logic. I appreciate you, Dr. Melinda Hall, coming to the class presentations after informing you about the last presentation, getting a 2.7 out of four and getting Dr. Russ to have a rubric about the interaction I had with him in the hall, from which he did then apologize for the lack of concern for me dropping the major via email. With, the, with Dr. Ronald Hall, I could not speak much at all about the sexual harassment because Title IX is dealing with it. I did, however, show you the bias grading, Dr. Melinda Hall, the email where he just stated completely inadequate. You said you couldn't make a comment on it due to your lack of skill, to which I just asked if he thought the fee his feedback was constructive, and well, you didn't reply. I don't know what to do anymore. I called my mother today telling her what I should do. Do I just keep my head down? Do I do my work and not, and hope not to be discriminated against? She told me to look up. I am requesting an audience with either the dean or the president about the grievance I filed previously and on the accord of what should happen to the, to the teacher. My philosophy is, you can walk all over me, but don't step on me. Thank you. And, uh,
Dr. Russ tries to defend himself. Hi, Artemis. I did give you a 3.5, a B plus, A minus, on your last assignment. A couple of points. First, I think it is great that you are incorporating more outside sources into your work. As I mentioned in my last email, I think you are beginning to better understand the game of philosophy, and I feel encouraged by your progress. The fact that you've moved from a B- to a B+, plus, A-, minus, is a reflection of that progress. Kudos. So what can we do? What can be done to get you an A or an A minus? That brings me to my second point. As mentioned in my comments, what I'd like to see in future work for you to be more explicitly connect those outside sources to your primary thesis. Namely, being gay is not a choice. You did give some evidence for this thesis, your own experience. This is good evidence, and contra your email, you mentioned that I shouldn't have used personal experience. I very much think your voice and this evidence should remain in the final paper. I understand that the project is centered around your voice and have no wish to dissuade you from pursuing that project. As I said to you in conversation, I want to hear your voice and I want you to amplify that voice by standing on the shoulders of others. Remember the quotation, stand on the shoulder, on the shoulder of giants. To that end, what would you say to scholars and philosophers who don't think that being gay is a, not a choice? Since that last email, we agreed to meet weekly, so one, you might want to discuss any grievances you have about my classes with me uh, personally, and two, that uh, we could discuss how to incorporate the voices of others into your thesis. The week we were scheduled to meet to talk about William Wickerson's Is It a Choice? Sexual Harassment as Interpretation. We may have also talked about your grade, but you overslept. Maybe we could meet next week. One final thought. Getting an A seems understandably important to you. This is a junior level class. This, this is a junior level classes intended for philosophy majors that have taken four plus philosophy courses. Given that, I thank you, a first year student who is taking academic philosophy courses for the first time, are doing relatively well. But like any skill, Philosophy takes time and practice to hone. You could consider taking classes, uh, the class pass, not, uh, pass, not pass, if you are worried, your ac worried about your, worried your academic record. Take care, Dr. Rust. And I responded, I don't care about the grade I receive. I care if I put my effort into a presentation assignments and get take and get points taken off because I use personal experience as a rhetorical device. Oh, and don't worry, I won't be dropping your class as you so namely wanted me to do when I confronted you about my thoughts of dropping the major. Your eyes made me swell with tears. You made me feel like I didn't belong. You only apologized to me via email because I've spoken with the chair. You don't care about me, Dr. Rust. You care about covering your rear end. And I'm done playing this game as so claim as philosophy with you. Good day, Artemis. And then we continue. And then I'm 
placed on an interim suspension because I went to the source, I went to Dean Scomp, and um, I got in trouble. Here is what they said. I have recently received several reports from the university staff outlining alleged violations of the student code of community standards and the guide of residential living. Therefore, effective immediately, you are hereby on a modified interim suspension, suspended until an administrative hearing with the Office of Community Standards can be held. This office will contact you via email to your Stetson University email account as to the date and time of that hearing. The following explains an interim suspension. In certain circumstances, the Vice President of Campus Life and Student Success and Dean of Students or designee may impose a university or on-campus housing suspension prior to the hearing before a judicial body. An interim suspension may be imposed only a to ensure the safety and well-being of members of the university, b to ensure that the student's own physical or emotional safety and well-being or if the student poses a definite threat or disruption of our, of or interferes with normal operations of the university. During interim suspension, the student may be denied access to on-campus housing and or the campus, including classes and or all university activities or privileges for which the vice president of Student Affairs and Dean of Students or his des designee may determine to be appropriate. During this suspension, you may only enter your resignee, your residence hall, Smith, and Dining Commons. You may not enter or be around any academic or administrative building without express prior permission from myself or the individuals copied on this notice. You are prohibited from attending classes or contacting academic faculty during this time. If you need any emergency or student support services, public safety, student counseling, health services, please do not hesitate to contact those offices. Any violation may result in suspension from all campus presences. And Larry. Now keep Larry in mind as he is a character that um, is going to suspend me by the end of this video. And here are the allegations that Dean Scott made against me. Dear Artemis, the Office of Community Standards have received a, res a report that you were involved in behavior which may violate the Stetson University Code of community standards. It is alleged that on April 4th, 2022, you were in violation of university policy. The report of such behavior has resulted in the following alle alleged violations. Harmful behavior, verbal or written harmful conduct, disorderly conduct, disruptive behavior, unauthorized entry, Respect for university representatives, failure to comply, a failure to comply with staff directives. An administrative hearing has been scheduled for you with me on Wednesday, April 6, 2022 at 2.30 p.m. in Cub 207. If you need to reschedule this hearing, please email me directly at B. Hawkins at Stetson.edu. Failure to comply with attending this hearing may result in additional violations under the Student Code of Community Standards, and is a decision will be made on this matter without benefit of your perspective. If you anticipate any barriers to, to your access or participation in this hearing, please contact the Office of Community Standards 
arrangements for certain accommodations may be registered with the academic success. Barbara Hawkins. Now, she is the director of community standards, so she is below Larry and the dean of students. Um, so they were not uh, going to um, suspend me uh, because if they did, uh, I would have gone to court and this would have all blown up in their faces. Um, but this is when I get scared and I email the president and ask for his guidance. Dear Christopher F. Roque, given your statue as president of the university, you are our leader, our people person, and supervise the relationship between students and the administration. I know writing to you about my situation is a little bit out there, being that you have so many other responsibilities. But if I'm being honest, this semester has been a roller coaster for me, as I feel as though you are my last hope. I hate how some people make it seem like college life is so easy. Making a resume isn't easy. Racial prejudices aren't easy. Life isn't easy. I'm assuming once I get my bachelor's degree, that's when things start to turn, hopefully. Albeit as the triple major that I am, and soon to be Spanish minor. I am asking you for a favor about community hours that are being deprived from me because of the allegations Dean Scomp has made against me. She said things like harmful behavior, disorderly conduct, unauthorized entry, respect for university representatives, and failure to comply. To fix me a smile, both figuratively and literally, all I ask is that you pardon all disciplinary sanctions, disciplinary probation, off-campus counseling, behavioral agreement, impact letter, and letter of apology. My grounds for this particular appeal are that it is unwarranted, inappropriate, and unnecessary for the following contentions. One, I took responsibility for the allegations made against me by Dean Scomp. Two, I suggested the sanction of apologizing to Dean Scomp. Three, I acknowledged when my thoughts of self-harm were present and went to the counseling services. Four, given the nature of the situation, all of my actions are justifiable. Being that I was sexually harassed, by one of her faculty members, Ronald Hall. It sounds like to me I was sexually harassed by one of Dean Scomp's faculty members. Therefore, I went to Dean Scomp and she refused to help me because, I don't know, she doesn't want something that could potentially harm the funding of the university and or image. I also can't initiate any contact with the Dean Elizabeth Scott because she filed a no-contact communication order. And Title IX couldn't do anything due to it being only one inappropriate comment made by Ronald Hall. Do you want to be in bed with me? I don't think the professor Ronald Hall should be fired unless there is a history of him doing this. However, my light is dimming, President Roki. And all I can reconcile is the clarity of where I stand and what I believe in. Please help me in finding my smile. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration and good night, your dearest Artemis. Now the president of the university responds. Dear Artemis, I am very sorry to learn of the challenges you are confronting. As there are student conduct and potential Title IX issues associated with your correspondence, I am not in a position to intervene. These processes 
out of fairness and consistency across all students are appropriately addressed within the Dean of Students area. Toward this end, I have cc'd Lynn Schoenberg on this correspondence. I hope you will take advantage of the resources available within the Dean of Students area. All my best, Christopher Roque, President, or Chris Roque. So through the guidance of the President, I found Lynn. and I am found responsible for all the alleged allegations. And Barbara Harkins said, thank you for meeting with me. I appreciate your honesty in our meeting due to information shared in the hearing and information received in the reports. I am finding you responsible for the above allegations. Although you did need and want support in the moment, there are appropriate processes that are expected to be followed at the university to ensure everything moves, everything runs smoothly. The sanctions I am assigning are to help and support you to be as successful as possible while at Stetson. The insurance suspension is lifted now that a hearing decision has been rendered. In response to these violations you have been given, the following sanctions. Disciplinary probation. Your pro probationary period begins April 8th, 2022 and ends December 15th, 2022. Disciplinary probation is dis defined as an encumbrance on the student's good standing at the university. Any subsequent violation of the university regulations during the dis during the probationary period may result in immediate separation from the university. A fixed term of probation may um, not less than three months of enrollment may be specified. A student disciplinary probation is deemed not in good standing for a period of time with the university. Off-campus counseling, assessment, and counseling. I need, I, oh my gosh, I, I need a pause. Okay, I'm back. Complete an assessment through an approved provider. You must complete an assessment with an approved off-campus provider. If you are already working with an off-campus provider, please let the Office of Community Standards know so that provider can be approved. You must engage in counseling that aligns with treatment recommendations provided through your assessment. This must be documented by two letters at minimum. One letter verifying completion of the assessment, treatment recommendations, and initial attendance in counseling. A second letter including dates of attendance and treatment summary provided. You must give consent for release of information to the licensed medical professionals who complete your assessment and counseling to provide attendance, verification, treatment recommendations, and a treatment summary to the Office of Community Standards. This documentation must be in a, an official medical office letterhead and sent to the Office of Community Standards at standards at stetson.edu and then a behavioral agreement was in place with Lynn. A behavioral agreement created with Dean of Students, Lynn Schoenberg. The behavioral agreement will focus on the aspects to help you be as successful as possible during your time at Stetson. Please email the Dean of Students, Lynn Schoenberg, by Monday, April 12th. 
at 4 p.m. to schedule time to complete the behavioral agreement by April 19th. Impact letter. Write a three-page reflective paper on how your actions in this incident could have impacted others. Start with others that were with you when the incident occurred. Also include how community, how the community could have impacted, whether it be the building, the university, the apartment, community, etc. How did your actions affect others around you? What might have been a different way to approach the situation that occurred? What can you do in the future when you need help and support on campus? How can this be prevented from happening again? Who and where are some resources on campus you can reach out to before violating policies again in the future? The paper must be 12 point font times New Roman double spaced with one inch margins all around the paper. The paper must be spell checked, grammatically correct, and utilize appropriate language. Be advised that this paper may not serve to justify your own actions nor evaluate the actions of others. This paper must be received by the Office of Community Standards. Please submit the sanctioned submission form by April 22, 2022. Letter of Apology Write a letter of, of apology to Dean Scomp. This letter should be no less than 250 words in length. It should reflect an understanding of the inappropriateness of your actions and the impact it had on the dean is, on Dean Scomp. This letter should address how you will make appropriate decisions in the future and what you ha what you learned about yourself or community responsibilities as a result of this incident. The Office of Community Standards will screen this letter and send it to the addressee. A copy will be kept in file as proof of completion of this sanction. Please be advised that this letter may not serve to justify your own actions, nor evaluate the actions of others. This letter should also utilize the appropriate language. This typed and signed letter of apology is due to the Office of Community Standards. Please submit your letter to standards at Stetson by April 22nd, 2022. Please complete all sanctions in a timely manner. Failure to abide by or complete the sanctions outlined above can result in further disciplinary action. Failure to complete any, any sanctions by the assigned due date will also result in a judicial hold being placed on your student account. The hold may impact your ability to register for classes and or request transcripts. You may appeal the decision or the sanction imposed within three business days of delivery of the decision. Barbara Hawkins and Lynn. These were my two major supporters for a while, but you will see that I will lose support from them eventually. Here is my impact letter. Deflection, inflation, and finally reflection. Let's imagine this. I am standing before the assistant who was reluctant on scheduling an appointment with me and the dean, and therefore I open the door of the dean Scomp's office, and to my surprise she was not in the meeting, as I've been told by the assistant. I exclaimed I need your help, and her response was to ask me to leave while saying that I must email her beforehand. I informed her that I emailed her twice last week regarding the sexual harassment I endured from one of her faculty members. She again asked me to leave and I say, make me listen. And that's when she brought in public safety. At this moment, my thoughts of self-harm became apparent due to those who I felt were deflecting responsibility at the time. After giving a statement of what happened, I asked Sergeant Stoy and Sarah if they could take me to the counseling services they provide here at Stetson. They complied.
note how they, I put they complied as like, they didn't really care about my well-being. Um, once arriving there, I watched with an, I was matched with an available counselor who I'll be meeting once a week. My want and need to be heard were satisfied. Upon completion of the session, I was then once again greeted by Sarah, Director of Domestic Violence, Sexual Assault, and Stalking Prevention at Stetson University. She was the one who gave me the news that I had been placed on interim suspension. I felt my skin go cold for a second. My thoughts began to wander in disparity. Sarah asked me if I have any questions for her. I reply rather timidly, instead of the words, Is there a difference between interim suspension and suspension? To which she reassures me I can still eat at the commons and go to my dorm until an administrative hearing is conducted to determine if I pose a threat to the university, and with that being said, whether or not it will be lifted. I went straight to my dorm and collapsed on my bed for uh, sleeping for 11 hours as if I had just run a marathon in my mind. I don't remember what I dreamt about, but I did wake up with a sense of calm. My brain wasn't working a thousand miles an hour anymore. I opted to put on my headphones and turn on some music. Music catalyzes me to be a more optimistic person and to chase my dreams. It seems to be working as I appear to feel and remember the music in me and of others. Marlene, Elizabeth Scomp, Sergeant Story, Sarah. I'll have jobs here that they have to attend to, and I've ruptured the flow of order that could have easily been prevented. If we all set up our songs to be synchronized in melody, wouldn't the world be a better place? If we focus on the music that we can produce instead of all the noise in the background, wouldn't we form a better orchestra? It is clear to me now what hasn't been before, because if we choose to listen closely, we can easily hear each other's me hear each other's obscured melodies and form the best of duos. I shouldn't have allowed my emotions to cloud my better judgment. Instead of getting frustrated and trying to speed up a process from which I thought was right, it was wrong. After speaking with Lydia, Lida, and with the whole investigation launch, I wondered what was taking so long for what accord will happen to the teacher. I'm grateful that Dean Scomp stopped me from speaking with her because if I did, it may have been considered as tampering with the evidence. I now see the person I probably wanted to go to was the person who supervises Lydia, which is Lynn Schoenberg, Dean of Students. I feel terrible for violating university policies. If there's anything I learned from this unfortunate incident is to keep peace in my soul and continue my academic endeavors ever so humbly. I came to Stetson University because of its values, and as a first-generation Cuban-American, I was enamored. There's this quote that comes from a poem from Max Ehrman that says, Be gentle with yourself. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. Dear Dean Scomp, First, this is my apology. First and foremost, let me start off by saying ever since the day I walked into your workplace and invaded your space uninvitedly, I've been feeling terribly awful. I should, as a morally responsible adult, remove myself from the premises of your office when you asked me to leave instead of having you resort to calling public safety. I accepted full responsibility for the mistake I made and I assure you I will be taking the necessary steps to prevent myself from being in this situation and violating university policy again in the future. I will be seeing Dean Schoenberg tailored with a behavioral agreement and an off-campus therapist provider to help ensure 
to on being as successful as I can be here at Stetson University. I am sorry, Dean Scomp, that I did not respect you, that I did not comply with you, and for the level of discomfort I aroused in you. I can only imagine the level of discomfort that experience must have been for you. In hindsight, the possibility of me having some kind of weapon never once occurred to me, but it may have may have very well been a worrisome thought for you, I would presume. And again, I feel terrible. There is no excuse for my actions. If there's anything I learned from this unfortunate incident as a freshman, is that of my community standards obligations here at Stetson University process so that everything moves smoothly. Sincerely, Artemis. Now Lida reaches out to me. Hope all is well with you. I wanted to share some additional information from our discussion about the incident in your class. While gender-based mis misconduct Title IX processes requires behaviors to occur on multiple occasions to sever pervasive and objectively offensive, there is n another option to address your concern immediately that could be helpful. You may contact Setson University's Office of Human Resources and specifically Director of Human Resources Betty Whiteman and share your experiences and ex share your experience and concerns. It helps to clarify it helps to clearly state the problem and what you consider the best outcome. The report will be handled directly by HR and not require the report to go to Dean Scomp or Associate Dean Glander. I hope this helps you move forward. Let me know if you have any questions. Best, Lida. And then a block of contact was occurred with Elizabeth Scomp. And a block of contact was initiated with Devin Bibby, a student who I confided. Um, and I felt that um, could resonate with my experience as she also had similar situations with a professor um, who touched her um, and Devin uh, chose to not be friends with me. I am back. I, I do apologize for the continued uh, disruptions in this video. I just reading and going through reliving these experiences is difficult for me and Devin Bibby was an individual I considered my friend, if not my best friend forever, really. And for her to do this to me is very disappointing and I, I felt like she stabbed me in the back with this. I trusted her with everything that has been going on and I've, I've always seeked her counsel and um, it's just something I really did not see coming. She told me I was batshit crazy and that made me feel very, very um, inferior. And it, it really broke my self-esteem.
And then another report came. Dear Artemis, the Office of Community Standards is currently reviewing reports that have been received regarding possible violations of the Code of Community Standards. This is a reminder of guidance emailed and provided by Dean Lynn Schoenberg on that date. Do not CC uninvolved university employees or community members on any emails. Do not email any professor you currently do not have a class with outside your advisor and Dr. Joelle Davis. Do not email the president. If you feel a need to include someone, you are welcome to CC Dean Schoenberg. If you feel you need to email outside of these parameters before the conclusion of your hearing, please make that request in writing to Dean Schoenberg, Lynn Schoenberg, or myself, Barb Hawkins. You are expected to adhere to the above instructions until a formal community standards hearing can be ta can take place. Failure to abide by the above will lead to community standards allegations. The Office of Community Standards will be in touch regarding details of the upcoming hearing. And these are the allegations. Failure to comply with staff directives, respect for university representatives, and harmful behavior. Retaliation, disorderly conduct, harmful behavior, failure to comply, respect for university representatives. And then on March 9th, failure to comply. Now this portion is separate from these two. An administrative hearing has been scheduled to meet with me and this is Larry now. I asked Dr. Melinda Hall for a letter of recommendation. Dear Dr. Hall, I am requesting your letter of recommendation. I know my performance wasn't the greatest in your class so I'm supplying other character references from teachers at my high school that led to my acceptance and awards at Stetson University. I will also be attaching my Yale application for you to review in your consideration. If your decision is a yes, I will go on the common application and officially request your letter. Thank you for your thoughtful consideration and have a good rest of your day. Take care. Dear Artemis, I cannot provide a letter, provide a recommendation letter for your transfer application. And then I sent her an, a voicemail asking on the reason as to why her response was no. Mm -hmm. Which I then told her to disregard it because I felt it was inappropriate. Then I sent her an email, which I cc'd the president on, but I um, blind carbon copied um, my other professors and uh, that I've attached myself to. Dear Dr. Hall, thank you for your email. As you are my academic advisor in the philosophy department, you were one of the first professors that came into my mind to ask for this request. President Roque was the second. It breaks my heart to come to terms with learning that your response is a no. I was only a freshman in the last spring semester when I had my first dose of philosophy classes. You came to my aid when difficulty was present and shielded me albeit the blatant sexual harassment and discrimination from another professor within the department who is now retired. It saddens me to think of you, Dr. Hall, not honoring this request. It do the, is due to the result of not knowing how. You said I cannot provide a recommendation letter for your 
your transfer application. My request for this letter did not come from whether you can or can't. It came from a request of will. I would have thought I established both a personal relationship with you as well as academically. Hence, I'm taking your biomedical class and would like to think I've given my all to my work. I am sorry that my all does not meet your criteria. Instead of asking the question why, in a childlike wonder, as most philosophers do, I will appreciate your candor and withdraw my hand. The withdrawing of my hand is a very emotive, invoking, just when a student withdraws their hand, it, it's just hard. Lynn sent me this email. Hi, Artemis. I'm including Jocelyn here based on a mutual release of information. Artemis, how are you? I was very surprised to see the email chain below after we met on Friday. I wanted to include Jocelyn here for support and transparency. Dr. Hall also let me know that you left her a voicemail over the weekend, Saturday, after she replied that she couldn't help with the reference, asking for reasons why the request was denied. The email you sent below had many other people blind carbon copied, including myself and various faculty in, the philo in philosophy. You cc'd the president of the university. I know we have talked a lot about being mindful and strategic in email correspondence, and a lot of that is who you cc and be cc. It is not a conduct violation to send the email you did below but I definitely don't think it helps you get what you want from educational support at Stetson. Employees do reserve the right to choose not to give reference letters and are not obligated to say why. I wonder your thoughts on how it would, have, it would feel to Dr. Hall to have colleagues forward such an email to her, not knowing if they were all included or to have such an email include the university president with her knowing a summary of what occurred last year in the dean office. Do you think the exchange m below might have startled Dr. Hall? We met Friday, and you never mentioned anything about transferring. Are you thinking about transferring? Any student I talk about transferring I would have encouraged application to schools who fit their academic performance here at Stetson. While Yale is a great school, you have so much potential as a student. Yale does not seem realistic, does not seem a realistic breach in your current GPA range. Would you like to talk through some schools that would be? Would you, we meet again on the 9th at 3.30. Do you wish to meet earlier and talk this through more? Hi, Lynn. The voicemail I sent to her asking why was done impulsively, and I informed her to please disregard that voicemail via email prior to sending my grandos email. I can meet with you today, Lynn, at 3.30 if you request my presence earlier. I am booked straight for days and have been. Do you need to meet before our preset on Friday the 9th at 3.30? No, I, however, I appreciate you asking. And then I write this email with everyone included. Dear Dean Schoenberg, thank you for your email. I hope you don't mind me calling you that. Dean Schellenberg, at least via email, out of how much respect I have for you. Sorry that it has taken me a couple of days to respond to your questions. I am still a bit shaky from Dr. Hall's response. 
to not even put unfortunately at the beginning of her sentence, and to have the audacity to put best wishes as her outro is mind-boggling. It confirms my fears that she does not like me, that it is all about her. I invested so much time with this one teacher, trying to grab her attention, participating in class, and doing all my assignments to the best of my ability, and have nothing to show for it. As for your other questions, yes, I have BB blind carved and coffeeed other teachers I've attached myself to, and I will CC them below. You said you CC the university president. Well, when you say it like that, that's what I meant to say, but I said, well, when you like that, I said, well, when, I, I meant to say, well, when, when you say it like that, I sure hope to God everything was grammatically correct. Wouldn't God want to be included in art discussions? It may have been possible that it may have startled Dr. Hall. Do you think, I forgot the word think. Do you think it startles her because I cc'd the president or because she knows he reads my emails? It's nothing a cup of coffee won't lick. On the other hand, my future lies uncertain. To answer your final question, you're right. I do have so much potential as a student and I don't want to let anyone down. That is why I submitted my transfer application to Yale University. There is no other school I would think would benefit me transferring to that would justify my abandoning my legacy here at Stetson University in despair. And then here is the song um, that I put, Stand By Your Man, and I said replace woman with teacher and man with student to the music video I have attached below. Take good care. And then here's the FERPA, the second allegations that were made against me. Dear Dean Schoenberg, I've spoken with the chair of the English department regarding this unfortunate experience I had with Dr. Denner. She let several people in the class know about my specific learning disability, language impairment. I hope that she reaches out to future students with accommodations individually. Because of this, and not doing any of her work, I decided it would be best to drop the course. I know of the implications of what dropping this class would do to me in the long run. I will be one class short from graduation and will get with my faculty advisor to discuss the plan. I have attached my ad drop form below. John Rasp. I am not sure why I'm being copied on this. Hello, Artemis. I spoke with Dr. Denner a few minutes ago. She agreed with me that it would be the best it would be best to contact students with accommodations individually, and she plans to do so in the future. I appreciate your reporting the incident. I will communicate with all the faculty in the department so that we all act consistently in this issue, on this issue. And then I, repo I replied, thank you. And then FERPA violation. Um, my Spanish teacher said, Buenas tardes, Artemis. No entiendo este mensaje y por qué me fue enviado a mí. ¿Me puedes explicar? Hablé con Elizabeth y ella me dijo que ibas a drop mi clase. ¿Me puedes aclarar? Todo esto es muy confuso. Doctora Parayo Ortiz. And what she's saying is she doesn't understand why the message was sent to her. And if I can explain... She spoke to another student and she told her that I dropped her class and she wants clarification. All of this is confusing.
And then I wrote back to Dr. Palaya Ortiz. Thank you for your email. Unfortunately, I cannot drop your class even though I can't handle the coursework you assign. I need to remain a full-time student to get my financial aid. I am currently passing my two other classes, however. The message above means I've been discriminated against, Dr. Paraya Ortiz. I've copied you on this email because I'd like you as my teacher. You'd want to know how it is I'm doing. The report above is a matter that can affect the federal funding of a university. Now that I have your attention, though, I forgot your attention. I do ask that you show up to your office hours as I am struggling in your class. My language impairment, I sometimes can't see the words that I'm writing because I have problems with my vision. I am a brain injury survivor and um, my occipital region was damaged. Um, so I sometimes can't see um, words or things or what's in front of me for periods of times. I do ask that you show up to your office hours as I am struggling in your class. And this is um, saying that she um, you can pause this if you want but I'm not going to read it. Um, she's saying that she thinks she's treated me the best with the most respect she can give a student. And um, I replied, Dear Dr. Parari Ortiz, let me make this publicly clear. I am sorry if I in any way was not empathetic in my response above. I was trying to be sh as straightforward as possible about what bothers me and how I want it fixed. But, I think I could have shown a little more empathy, especially surrounding addressing issues. You are human just like us after all. I have said to you in person how much I value the skill set you offer, and I have debated dropping your class because I don't want to harm your past right. Thank you so much for your thoughtful email. And then... Dr. Young says, Hi Artemis, I am so sorry you experienced this. I care very much about your success at Stetson and beyond, but copying all of us into complaints about other faculty makes me uncomfortable. I think about if a student had an issue with me and they copied in the president and others, how that would make me feel. In the future, maybe we can find a way to not copy in so many folks if you had an issue with one specific person. I understand that you are keeping us in the loop, but at the same time, I think that the kind of thing to do might be to address this one-on-one -on -one with the person that you have an issue with. Something similar happened to me recently, and it really hurt my feelings that the student didn't come to me and instead went and talked about behind my back. The student, unlike you, said things that were inaccurate and, har and hurtful because they did not agree with the parts of my identity due to their conservative ideals. Then the faculty member they told repeated what they said to at least two other colleagues before asking me about it. And it was just very, a very uncomfortable and hurtful situation. Once I had to s the chance to say my piece, several other people had already formed an opinion based on inaccurate and biased information. Things should never be handled the way with so many people judging you before you have a chance to speak. I share this to show you that faculty members have feelings too, and when a student says something, it has power, inaccurate or not. We all need to do our best to be kind and gracious 
whenever possible. I know you have a good heart and the best intentions, but I also want you to think about how your actions might inadvertently hurt the feelings of others. Let's grab coffee or lunch soon and catch up. I would love to hear about your spring break and how your semester is going. I'm available Wednesday at noon if that works for you. Let me know. Dr. Young was actually a professor I had where I was in a class with and I I have nothing bad to say about her. She is a blessing. We do not deserve her at that school. Um, She is great. And then I sent another email to everyone. I wanted to provide some context about the previous email. Dr. Dinner did not just breach Burpo that first day of school for me, but several other students that had accommodations. That is why I wanted her to reach out to her students individually in the future. It's come to my understanding, however, that people don't respond well when they're being blamed with things. So I am taking responsibility and directing it away from them and more towards what I need as a student from them to succeed. And that kind of just changes the ball a bit because um, it doesn't escape me from what I did, but it explains why I reacted in the way I did because although I didn't mention the other students that were affected, maybe they were too afraid to speak up, but I was not afraid. We just, we need more students who aren't afraid to speak up because there is a power dynamic between the student and the teacher. And unfortunately, The student doesn't have much power, even when they speak out, because I still lost. I still ended up, I had to drop the class. And please know, I didn't include Dr. Denner, Nicole Denner, on this email correspondence at all, because I didn't want her to, you know, I I didn't want to associate myself at all with her. It wasn't designed to cause harm, my email correspondence. That is my belief. And then I was found responsible. Disciplinary, I will remain on disciplinary probation for the entire time I'm a student here. I need to complete a new psychological assessment. And then the behavioral agreement is updated to not CC or include anyone. Yeah, they they viewed me as a threat to the university, that's why. And then I was blocked from sending emails to the entire philosophy department, which are four professors and President Roki. I would like to contact them, please make that request in writing to the Dean of Students. And I needed to write a reflection paper and major in career coaching. And then here's my psychological assessment. Dear Ms. Schoenberg, this letter is to confirm that I have completed that I completed a psychological consultation with Artemis on the 25th in response to your request for such an assessment to address multiple conflicts they have had with various professors in the course of his education at Stetson University. The details of these conflicts have been documented and will not be recounted here. Suffice it to say that Artemis has been forthcoming and noting and describing his difficulties in managing a number of relationships with professors. 
A mental status exam reveals Artemis to be psychologically intact, as there are no indications of severe mental disorder, which impedes orientation to reality or developmental disorders that interfere with cognitive capacities. They have a history of depression and anxiety and continue to experience symptoms associated with these psychological conditions. They have been formally diagnosed with social anxiety disorder and depressive disorder, has been treated psychiatrically with medication but is not being treated medically at the time of this assessment. They are working through issues related to identity formation, which is the source of some stress. There is a history of language delays and learning disabilities for which he has received accommodations. Artemis has some insight into the behaviors which led to this evaluation, sharing with me that their response to conflicted relationships with faculty are a sign of acting irrationally. There is a history of being exposed to bullying that lends a post-traumatic stress aspect to their psychological coping style. In some, Artemis Nunez comes to this art evaluation with a history of conflictual relationships with faculty at Stetson University and in high school with teachers. It is my impression that a history of being exposed to bullying and identity challenges m have led to a low self-esteem and a fragile self-concept. Self Artemis has developed an approach to protecting themselves from further vulnerability by aggressively defending themselves when they feel their integrity is threatened. It is my impression that there is a trauma component to this mode of responding. Based on the results of this evaluation, it is recommended that Artemis continue to participate in individual counseling. It is further suggested they consider a counseling approach which include trauma processing strategies such as EMDR therapy. It is suggested that counseling support targets the feelings of vulnerability and inferiority that Ar Artemis experiences that fuel the response style noted above. If you have any additional questions or concerns regarding Artemis's mental status, please feel free to contact me. And then another thing happened where um, I sent a LinkedIn request to Dean Scop, and there was a there is a clear preponderance of evidence that you violated the code of community standards when you contacted Dr. Scop through LinkedIn. Your explanation during the hearing was the contact was. In unintentional since you were connecting with any suggestion of the platform is plausible given the circumstances discussed. Therefore, I am not suspending you from the university at this time. However, any future findings of responsibility will result in your suspension from the university. In response to these violations, you have been given the following sanctions. You are being placed on deferred suspension until May 15th, 2024. It is suspension from the university and does not take effect unless there is future findings of responsibility for an allegation of the community, of the code of community standards. If you are found responsible for an allegation of the community code, you will be suspended from the university, even if the allegation would not normally arise to suspension level offense. Write a letter of apology to Provost Scop. This should be no less than 250 words in length. It should reflect an understanding of the inappropriateness of your actions and the impact it had on Provost Scop. This letter should address how you will make more appropriate decisions in the future and what you learned about yourself or your community responsibilities as a result of this incident. The Office of Community Standards will screen this letter and will send it to the addressee. A copy will be kept in your file as proof 
of completion of this sanction. Please be advised. Be advised that this letter may not serve to justify your own actions nor evaluate the actions of others. This letter should also utilize appropriate language. This typed and signed letter of apology is due to community standards. Please submit your letter to standards by the 7th of August. And I got this in pretty quick. Dear Provost Scott, I am writing to express my sincere apologies for the recent behavior on LinkedIn. I understand that reaching out to you during a block of contact was inappropriate, and I take full responsibility for my actions. When your name appeared on my suggestion on my suggested connections list, I should have recognized our previous encounters and been more mindful of the boundaries set forth by the community standards. Instead, I acted impulsively, which was not only inappropriate, but also disrespectful. I want to assure you that this incident has served as a valuable lesson for me, and I am taking extra steps to ensure my actions are always respectful and appropriate in the future. I will be more cognizant of the boundaries and protocols set forth by the community standards. I also want to take this opportunity to congratulate you on your recent promotion to provost. As a brain injury survivor with a specific learning disability, I commend everything you do to promote and provide university accommodations. Your work is crucial in assuring that all students have equal access to education and I admire your dedication to this cause. Once again, I apologize for my behavior and any inconvenience or discomfort it may have caused you. Thank you for taking the time to read this letter. Sincerely, Artemis. And then I'm just uh, royally fucked at this point because I am not responsible. I am, I'm just gonna keep reading. You can pause and read it, but this is what happened. I can't believe they suspended me for this. Artemis, you did not submit homework three or homework four on Canvas, so those grades are now zeros. I have not received any notifications from the accessibility regarding your test on Monday. Please remember that you, it, that if you want extra time, you will have to take the test with the Accessibility Center. You indicated in your last office visit that you were going to stick it out until midterm and see if you could pass. Earning a passing grade is going to be difficult or impossible if you continue to miss assignments. Just wanted to check in. And then I changed the subject to slight mental breakdown. Hi, Professor Goshaw. I did well in the beginning assignments because they were just words. The knowledge of statistics. I know how to create an experiment and even collect data. It's just making sense of it part the displaying of the data that freaks me out. When numbers change to letters is when I lose it. This becomes a whole other language I must learn to acquire. My specific learning disability, language impairment that I have since acquired after sustaining a traumatic brain injury to my occipital region at age seven is believed to be the catalyst to my inability to perform well in your class. Because of this, I process input and output information differently from the typical pupil. My other three classes are easier. The two psych, the two psych classes that are heavy on learning in terms and concepts that our exams can be taken orally. Dr. King, chair, has graciously staffed to him. When questions are presented orally, 
it becomes less taxing on my brain. It also allows me to keep a faster pace and not reread the question three times before I could understand what it is asking of me. Dr. King is great at reiterating questions, I think. I find needing reiterating. Since psychology has now become a science and not an art, I must learn additional skills like the scientific method, and on top of that, I won't be able to brand these skills like math majors do. I think it has become a science because that department receives more funding, which means students fail more math classes, having to retake them. My third class, Philosophy of Law, cannot be taken orally as it is just about writing papers. Unfortunately, I do not believe I have the brain power to pass your class. I started walking fast last Tuesday. I felt better. Next thing I know, my leg just gives out when walking down the stairs. I had to take one step at a time. Imagine how my brain feels. I knew your class would be hard, but Dr. King advised if I did not take this semester, I wouldn't graduate in 2025 as a psychology major, so here I am just dwelling at the loss of abilities I once had. My ability to consume solid foods have returned, but my ability to sleep remains affected. My teeth, Invisalign journey, is not over and my teeth are constantly tired. I am nearing the end, however. I am on tray 13 out of 19, and that means in a month and a half from now, I will be good to return to normal sleep patterns in the midday and enjoy slightly above eight hours of sleep at night. I lost too much weight last year when I started corrective treatment for my underbite which led to me dropping your class last year in the fall. I fear if my brain keeps competing between what to focus on and not allowing time to regenerate, I may just shut down and have a slight mental breakdown. I hope this email found you well, my professors, advisors, and dean of students. She tells me she doesn't have much time to talk and some resources. And then class performance. Artemis, the message you sent, I sent to you yesterday regarding your performance in Math 125Q was a personal message to you from me regarding your performance in this class. It was not an email intended to be distributed to and shared with others. I do not appreciate your reply to my message was sent to uh, your other professors and selected administrators. That is a breach of confidentiality as, I, as far as I'm concerned. You have clearly articulated your disability and the manner in which it impacts your ability to understand math. And it is not my intention to contribute to anyone's mental breakdown. I'm not sure where that leaves us at this point. Thank you for being so honest and open for regarding your learning issues and the manner in which others have tried to accommodate you. Thank you for also understanding that while math may be a sh subject they struggle with, it is also in the curriculum for a reason. Dear Professor Goshaw, thank you for reaching out to me. Please know that it was not my intention to make you feel like I breached confidentiality at all with sharing your message yesterday to me to others. The message you sent to me did not seem sensitive whatsoever. Grades are something full-time staff have access to. My apologies, however. I invite you to email me requesting an in-person meeting for the future should you want to communicate with me more privately. My goal in sending that email was to inform you and my other current professors of my struggle and my desire to perform optimally well in this academic environment. The admins you are referring to, Lynn and Dr. Glander, are individuals I trust. The Dean of Students is the Chief Student Advocate. Dr. Glander is the Senior Associate 
and physics professor who is classified as my academic advisor. Dr. King Chair is my primary academic advisor. You are free to consult with him regarding where that leaves us at this point of uncertainty. My objective is to hopefully get my grade to a passing point that would be enabling for me. I intend to keep pushing and keep up with my graduating class of 2025 as a brain injury survivor and youth at risk of homelessness due to cutting ties with my immediate family that has been emotionally and physically abusive. I don't stop. I won't stop. I can't stop, Professor Goshaw. I just can't. I will not allow my specific learning disability language impairment that I have since acquired after sustaining a brain injury at age seven to win again by dropping your class again. I'd rather fail. Please do not feel singled out. I am experiencing loss of abilities even in extracurricular extra activities I participate in Dr. Rasp, the organizer of Chess Club. I have been a member for three years. Ask him, even my chess skills have dropped. I have retained my ability to think three moves ahead, but I have fallen behind on remembering where those pieces have been placed. My memory has taken a hit as indicated in my email chain below. I hope this email has found you well. And then Dr. Rasp says, Artemis, it is really not appropriate for you to be copying me on this sort of, sort, on this sort of personal correspondence, and you have done so on multiple occasions. Please do not do so again. Thanks, John Rasp. I respond, Hi, Dr. Rasp. Thank you for your response and this information. I have made a note of it for future reference. Thanks again for everything. Your chess club really did give me an escape from writing papers. I hope this email found you well. And then I respond, John, here's the clip I was talking to you about last Friday in chess club of a teacher being fired for telling a student two plus two equaled four. I understand the importance of math in the, in in the curriculum despite personally struggling with it. And then I respond to Professor Goshaw. I did want you to let you know of someone else very special who happens to be teaching in a class I am in Upon of the admins I mentioned earlier, you are also welcome to consult with Dr. Rast, who is Select Faculty Senate, who advocates for faculty. Taking philosophy of law with him is interesting. It's just math with words, but with words. To reiterate, currently you are presented with a student who lacks the magical brain properties for language acquisition. Although I do not possess the brain power to pass your class, you can choose to assign a final grade based on the content of what's moral. This requires you ignore what is procedural. I hope you are well. And then she sends this to all her students. Hi class, yesterday Sunday I spent the entire day in the ER with my husband who is having heart issues and may have had a very slight stroke. It is doubtful that I will be able to make it to campus today. Test one will be given as scheduled, assuming I can find a colleague to be there in my place. Office hours will not be held today. Thank you for understanding my situation. Hope to see you Wednesday. Professor Goshaw. Then I respond, good morning. Sorry to learn of the challenges and pain your husband is experiencing. 
Professor Goshaw. While I cannot imagine the pain you are going through, despite my attempts to be able to fully empathize, I sympathize. I recognize and validate your emotions, feelings, thoughts, and actions. To assist in finding a college to cover your class, I am copying my current professors, advisors, and selected administrators. Dr. Glanner responds, Artemis, this needs to stop. Dr. Goshaw did not give you permission to share the information about her husband's medical condition with anyone else. You have no justification to copy the set of people that you included on this email. You also need to cease from making any further posts to the earlier email string about Math 125. Dr. Goshaw correctly pointed out that it is not okay to be sharing communications she has with you about the course with other instructors. Dr. Rass told you it was inappropriate as well. Despite those, you continue to make additional posts with a long list of people copied. On our on the other earlier email, including Dr. Rust and the people you copy, was a violation of the agreement you signed covering communications with faculty in the philosophy. Emails to Dr. Rust are to be continued to matters dealing directly with the course you are taking with him. The challenges you are having in Math 125 have nothing to do with philosophy courses. So my justification was she copied it I mean, she sent it to, tw I would like to assume when you sent a message like that to 20 people, like the entire class, that would be public. I didn't, I was, my pure intention was to help and not to cause harm. Lynn responds, hello Artemis, I will be sending I will send you other emails regarding your immediate well-being and academic plans from the below. Dr. Glander and I are in agreement that the, the email below, as well as others that have come through since Friday break, the terms of the attached agreement. A reminder that this agreement was made in the summer of 2023 to allow a pathway for you to take classes in the philosophy department. This was given your community standards sanction, which has removed your ability to email professors in the philosophy department, as well as others at Stetson. Copying Dr. Russ to the email below is out of compliance with the stipulations of your agreement. The below is outside the academic matters relevant to the class that is being taken from Dr. Rust. Dr. Rust has no reason to know about the difficulties in your math course or the choices being made in psychology regarding exams. We also believe that it is inappropriate to send an email to all your instructors contrasting approach being taken in other courses. Numerous professors and others have also emailed you recently requesting not to be cc'd and expressing that this is inappropriate from their own perspective. I also want to reiterate something you have told me you have told me you understand this gets in the way of your academic success. Some of these additional emails also have inaccurate information or requests in them. This email is meant to serve as a final warning regarding this behavior. The agreement stipulates that failure to comply with the above will result in the community standards allegations, a hearing, and possible sanctions. If this behavior continues, you will have to go the route of community standards allegations. We want to further remind you that you are on disciplinary probation for the remainder of your time at Stetson University. 
Any future violation will result in suspension from the university. If you have questions or concerns regarding your academic accommodations, these should always go to Martha Von Meering. We collectively hope to serve to clarify expectations we have for you as a student member of our community. I'm not going to read this agreement. Um, you can pause because I just, I'm, I'm not like, it, this is just crazy. They, they had me sign this. Then the foundation, uh, she, Dr. Kassan sent me an email. Hello, Artemis. Test two of the foundations is scheduled for this Thursday. Will you be taking the test in class or requesting an oral examination? If you are requesting an oral examination, please contact Dr. King and ask for her availability. copied Lynn because I can copy her. I copied Dr. King because she's my academic advisor. And I said, hi, Dr. Kassan, I'm requesting an additional item on top of an oral examination. According to my accommodations, I have the power to ask for your notes. Please provide this information electronically or in a paper copy by tomorrow. I prefer it to be in paper. However, the choice is yours to make, whichever is more convenient for you. I will reach out to Dr. King in a separate email string. Hello, Artemis. Good news. You, have, you already have access to all my materials for the course. Absolutely everything covered in the class is posted on Canvas. I post all my PowerPoints, handouts, assignments, and extra resources for my students. Then I respond, hi again, Dr. Kassan. While your course materials in Canvas were certainly helpful, they weren't concise. I am including Martha von Meering to clarify my accommodations. Martha, please let Dr. Kassan know that I can request an additional item not presented to all other students. This item should be notes for the exam. This requires the professor to create personalized notes for me. I hope you are well. Hello, Artemis. You are registered for the following accommodations alternate presentations and or doing presentations in an alternate way. Alternate presentations will be determined on a class by class basis by the professor based on the essential components of the course. Alternate format of examinations, audio, digital if requested, 100% additional time for examinations and quizzes, separate distraction reduced testing environment when needed, copy of PowerPoint slides, lectures, or the opportunity for the student to take pictures of slides or notes on the board during class. Advance access to course materials and directions if possible. I am so sorry but I'm not seeing anything about personalized notes by the professor to be given to you for use during exams. When you have a minute, can you help me understand your thought process in coming to this conclusion? Thank you. Thanks very much, and please take care. Um, I did not feel accommodated. I, I thought I should have... I thought that accommodation was in there, but apparently it wasn't. And uh, because of my language impairment, I have issues with comprehension and inputting information. So this item would have been beneficial to me 
but I mean, I have a fucking, I have a language impairment, for Christ's sake. And then, uh, I also send this to Dr. Dickey. Um, hi, Dr. Dickey, I'm not receiving good grades. I got a 47% on the first exam. This is 3% less than I did in the last two years while I was taking Psychology 101, and I meant to say without accommodations, because I just, I, I did not, I, I didn't request my accommodations. I didn't want to be discriminated against my first year. And then I said, having to memorize and organize six theorist ideas is difficult for me. I intend to change a variable in this equation. I'm requesting an additional item on top of an oral examination. According to my accommodations, I have the power to ask for your notes. Please provide this information electronically or in paper copy two days prior to the exam start date. I prefer it to be in paper. However, the choice is yours to make, whichever is more convenient for you. I hope you are well. Hi Artemis, I'm sorry that you did not receive a grade you wanted on the exam. If you'd like, I'd be happy to meet and discuss your exam performance and some study tips for next time. Do notes, do note the rest of the class will be using the same format. Regarding your request for notes, the only notes I have are the PowerPoints, which you already have access to. Additionally, the study guide should serve as a great reference guide while studying for the exam. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. And then I respond, Hi, Dr. Dickey. While your course materials on Canvas were certainly helpful, they weren't concise. I am including Martha von Mary to clarify my accommodations. Martha, please let Dr. Dickey know that I can request an additional item not presented to all other students. This item should be for the exam. This requests, this requires the professor to create personalized notes for me. I hope you are well. And then she says the same thing. And then, responsible. I tried so hard, like, to say that it was not my, it, I wasn't designed, like, the emails were just to communicate my struggle. They weren't designed to cause harm or disorderly conduct or fail to comply. If anything, my numerous emails should show that I care about my education at Stetson and I want to get the best education I can. And like sometimes I just feel like, why is this even required? Like, why is a bachelor's degree required? I mean, it has like what I want to do, I want to become a therapist. And in order for me to do that, I need to pursue a graduate degree, not an undergraduate degree. But I understand that people need people skills and know how to interact with people. But these were the sanctions. I've been suspended for seven months. Academic agreement with Associate Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences or their appropriate designee for their remaining time at Stetson inclusive of graduate courses will include items to help you succeed academically at Stetson. Restriction of privileges, continuation of email restrictions and block senders lists for faculty and staff, prohibiting emails to and including faculty and staff unrelated to the class and subject matters. And disciplinary probation, I will remain the entire time I am a student in Stetson and the behavioral agreement. Mm -hmm. 
And then I try to email the president saying, Dear President Roki, I hope this finds you well. I'm writing to bring to your attention a matter of utmost importance regarding my recent disciplinary suspension, which was decided upon Larry Coral Hughes and Ling Schoenberg. I understand that your vice president, Dr. Downey, is currently on vacation, and therefore I am directing this appeal to you. First and foremost, I would like to emphasize that my intention in reaching out to my current professor was solely to communicate my struggles with the course contact. I believe that the allegations made against me which resulted in disciplinary action do not hold me responsible for failing to comply. However, I must acknowledge that the behavioral agreement was previously established between Dr. Rust and myself, and regrettably, due to the progression of my learning disability, language impairment, I unintentionally overlooked this agreement. Regarding the accusation of disorderly conduct, I firmly maintain that my actions were driven by a genuine attempt to convey my difficulties this semester to my teachers. I did not have any intention to engage in disorderly conduct. In fact, I believe that my numerous emails demonstrate my earnest concern and dedication to my education. I feel that my exclusion and perceived dismissal from the community is a result of being a different learner, and I sincerely request that you consider this aspect while reviewing my appeal. I kindly implore you to take into account the positive contributions I've made to the Stetson community. Over the course of a year, I provided customer service in the financial aid department, where I encountered several Where, where I encountered students who were in distress due to failing classes. In such moments, I offered support, comfort, and assistance by facilitating the course exclusion form and providing a comforting embrace. These experiences have reinforced my desire to help others, and obtaining a college degree would enable me to fulfill this aspiration. Additionally, I humbly request that you consider the potential detrimental impact this disciplinary suspension will have on my future. All I have ever wanted was to make a positive difference in people's lives, and acquiring a college education is crucial for me to achieve this goal. I genuinely believe that their skills, that the skills and knowledge I have gained at Stetson will empower me to be a service of others. President Roki, I understand the gravity of the stipulations and the importance of upholding principles and the standards of our esteemed institution. I am committed to learning from this experience and taking necessary steps to ensure such misunderstandings do not occur in the future. I kindly ask for your compassion, understanding, and fair consideration of my appeal. Thank you for taking time to review my concerns. I remain hopeful that you will give due consideration to my appeal and provide me an opportunity to address these allegations made against me. I trust the fairness of the process and commitment of the Stetson University to fostering an inclusive and supportive environment for all learners. I hope you are well. And then I attached that video got it in you and there's a reason why I'm fighting so hard even though I've been sanctioned not to email the president like I'm fighting so hard because I know my presence will ultimately affect my academic performance my absence will affect my performance and it will affect other students so with them attacking me they are attacking other students and she responds, As a reminder, this is not a proper way to appeal a community standards outcome. As noted in the decision letter, you can submit an appeal using the appeal form. I have copied and pasted the below appeal instructions from the letter. And, they, and then they tell me to do it through there. And she does not reverse it. Per the community code 
of community standards. The Office of Community Standards may determine an outcome based on the information provided in the appeal without further action of the student and or organizations involved participation in an additional hearing. In this situation, we have reviewed your information and have made a determination as such. Unfortunately, based upon my review of your request for appeal, I find no basis for a reversal of the sanctions imposed. You did not identify any procedural errors that impacted the outcome of your case. You also did not sufficiently state why you believe the sanctions were inappropriate. You mentioned a behavioral agreement was previously established, but then stated you unintentionally overlooked this agreement. Your reference to an agreement that had no bearing on this case is indicative of the need for stricter sanctions. Therefore, the sanctions communicated to you on October 9th, 2023 will not be reversed and will be imposed effective immediately. As a reminder, if you choose to apply for a re-entry to Stetson, stipulations for your return to campus will be communicated by the Dean of Students. And then I respond to her, Dear LaToya, I hope this email finds you well. I am writing to express my gratitude for taking time to review my appeal. I appreciate your attention to the matter. After carefully considering your feedback, I acknowledge that I did indeed appeal the sanctions imposed on me. As outlined in my original appeal, I raised two key points. A significant procedural error occurred that recently may have impacted the outcome. The sanctions are not appropriate to the violation for which the student or organizations have been found responsible. Upon reflection, I find I recognize that the significant procedural error I refer to stems from the progression of my learning's disability and learning and language impairment. Due to these challenges, I unintentionally forgot about the behavior agreement that was established which resulted in my failure to comply with it. It is important to emphasize that this oversight was not intentional on my part, and I firmly believe I should not be held responsible for a failure that was beyond my control. Furthermore, I would like to highlight that there is no evidence to support the allegation of harmful behavior that have been made against me. The disorderly conduct allegation in particular is unfounded my intention was solely to communicate my struggle to my teachers, seeking understanding and support. I deeply regret any misunderstanding that may have risen from this situation. I humbly request that you consider the ruling of the sanctions imposed upon me. The ramification of these sanctions would be incredibly severe, as they would render me homeless. I implore you to take into account the positive contributions I've made to the community as highlighted in my initial appeal. Notably, I dedicated a year to providing customer service to the financial aid department, which allowed me to assist numerous individuals and contribute to the overall well-being of our institution. I understand that you have the option to decline my request for further review. If you find it necessary to maintain the current sanction ruling, I kindly request that you provide me with the timeline indicating when I must evacuate the premises. And then Barb's tells me, there is no reconsideration of an appeal decision in our process. Once the appeal decision has been rendered, the decision is final and cannot and will not be changed. The process has been completed and a decision provided. Please take the appropriate steps to move out of your campus housing. And then they take me out. Barb's Lynn, they just weren't helping me anymore. And this is my fellow, my last email that I sent to the students every teacher I, had a I was in a class with, to everyone, really. 
but most importantly, the students I was currently in a class with. Dear fellow students, I hope this email finds you well. I am writing to inform you of my regrettable absence from the Stetson community due to disciplinary suspension. It is with a heavy heart that I share this news with you, as I deeply value our interactions and the sense of camaraderie we have built together. The administration has placed me on a disciplinary suspension for the remainder of the current semester and the following spring term. These actions were taken in response to the allegations that arose when I communicated my personal struggles with my teachers in an email regarding my challenges in acquiring statistical knowledge. As a brain injury survivor diagnosed with a specific learning disability, language impairment. The statistics course presented significant difficulties for me. I believed it I believed it was important to express my concerns to my current teachers, but unfortunately the administration and faculty viewed my communication as harmful and did not appreciate my voicing of opinions. I apologize for the impact this situation has on our shared experienced experiences. I will miss the laughter we shared in the halls and the support I was able to provide to those in need. I have come a long way in my journey and I am including uh, including navigating issues with sexual harassment with faculty, with the community standards officers. And I fear that the administration may have reached a point where they find my presence challenging Please understand that I did my best to continue my studies and remain a part, remain part of the Stetson community. However, I realized that I couldn't face these challenges alone. Throughout these, throughout my time here, I have genuinely cared about the well-being of the Stetson community. Having worked for a year in the financial aid department, I had the opportunity to connect with many of you and understand the unique struggles you face. I wanted you to know that your feelings are recognized and valid, and you have every right to express your concerns about this unfortunate turn of events. Regrettably, the administration has removed my ability to email the president directly. However, I urge you to utilize your privileges and reach out to him on my behalf. You can email the president with the subject title AMN for Where is Artemis Moran Nunez to express your concerns and inquire about the situation. I appreciate your understanding and support during this challenging time. Your solidarity means a great deal to me and I will always cherish the memories we have shared within this remarkable community. Wishing you all the best in your academic pursuits and personal endeavors. And then that was done. That was when Lennon followed me, the dean, because her job is to protect other students, and when it affects other students, it means she it isn't doing her job. Perhaps I can provide an illustration. So this is me. attack the students. But Lynn but Larry steps in.
I want to say that I am no one without Stetson. I, all I wanted to do was dedicate my life to healing and helping people as a therapist. And my life is just, they aren't going to take me back. I know they aren't. And, um, I, I am no one without my, like, I started applying to, like, a lot of places, and, um, I am looking for a job, so if you're an employer and you are, um, watching this video, um, and sympathize with, and can sympathize with my situation, uh, my sister did pick me up, she did save me, but, um, I'm still living with my parents and my sister is still living with our parents. She has two kids and um, she was struggling so she had to move back here. And, um, you know, I, there's just, you know, all of it was true, you know, like my parents, I can't tell you, my mother isn't like physically abusive but she can be emotionally abusive at times but my father can be emotionally and physically abusive um like there were instances where I needed to call the police because he was hitting her um and uh yeah um I will leave the applicable links to my social media my LinkedIn, um, for those of you who wish to connect with me, um, I have several skills, um, I can show you my LinkedIn right now, um, one second. So here's my LinkedIn. I have two experiences. For the last three years, I've been the president of the Stranahan High School chapter of the National Speech and, Sp and Debate Association, where I exhibited the work that could, I'm sorry, where I exhibited the work ethic and dedication to pursue any goal. And then you know, I did customer service in financial aid. And my 12 skills, tutoring, Spanish, public speaking, Microsoft PowerPoint, leadership, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, English, debate, speech, customer service, student financial aid. I want to thank you all again for all those who stayed until the end and I will forever be grateful for you all. I, I truly do care and I am doing everything in my power to return to Stetson and continue my education. Uh, because I, I know this will affect my future greatly and um, it's just gonna be more money. And you know, they did charge me for that semester, for this semester that I'm currently missing. And I also broke the housing agreement. But that was because I left because they suspended me, not because I wanted to leave. I, I truly do believe in Stetson, but based on everything that has happened, I cannot recommend people to go to Stetson. If you apply to Stetson, you have a 90% chance that you'll be, you'll be accepted per their 
acceptance rate, according to their acceptance rate. But I've been at Stetson. I've worked for Stetson. I I know how their functions work, how the organization works. And what they're going to do is they're going to accept everyone who applies and they're going to give everyone some sort of scholarship, but the amount will vary. And there are many instances where students, you know, accept the awards and they come for like a semester or maybe two and then they leave because they can't register for classes because of their balance. So if you do apply to Stetson, please be cognizant of the awards. Um, I'm in debt of over, oh, I'm in debt in the th thousands of dollars. I accepted money and I did not I didn't make it to the end. Um, I did apply for jobs um, and I did get an interview uh, this uh, Saturday uh, and I'm, I don't think I'm going to share everything that has gone, that has happened to me at Stetson. Um, I'm just going to say I, I've taken a break because this is really embarrassing and you know it's hard to talk about because I really did try my best but I will not be in a place that has a definite bias against me and in a place where I'm not wanted perhaps my absence will make them feel better. Thanks again for all who have watched and I will link all the applicable addresses to my um, email if you wish to do, uh, if you wish to email me personal messages or um, in the comments below or if it's business related. Thank you.